from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Hello everyone, welcome to our live coverage from SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. We are here at Dell EMC World 2017 with Michael Dell, the chairman and CEO of Dell Technologies, which is the company that owns Dell EMC. But this is the first year of the EMC World passing the baton formally to the Dell EMC World. There was an event in Austin, small event, one month after the close in September, uh, eight months ago. Michael, great to see you. Thanks for spending the time out of your valuable schedule to come on theCUBE, appreciate it. Always great to be with you, John. This is like the sports center of all the action, so I got to go hard hitting question first. Um, you know I'm a big fan of entrepreneurship and certainly a big fan of innovation uh, and the work that you've done. Saw on your Facebook page, 33 years, uh, you had that video when you were a kid. <laughs> I forget if that was the, how long in that was, but you were still in your dorm room. 33 years ago, last week, and a trillion dollars in sales, really pretty amazing. Um, notice Mark Zuckerberg also commented on your face. He probably built Facebook on a Dell laptop. Um, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's been fun, it's been exciting, interesting, and thrill of a lifetime but I actually think the next 33 years will be much, much more exciting. So I I'm, I'm, couldn't be more excited about the future. It's really good to see you kind of, we you know, talked about years ago when you were, rumors of you going private. Certainly there's a spring in your step every year. You seem to get stronger with the private, you know, not being the public company. But I got to ask you from an entrepreneurial standpoint, you're the founder-led CEO entrepreneur. You can't take the entrepreneur out of the, out of the kid. What's the management style? When I interview Andy Jassy, Jeff Bezos, um, they have that founder-led entrepreneurial culture, but it's transforming into a management practice now from folks who are, through experience, and, and observing what's in front of them, have to take on the next 33 years. What is the key to success based on your experience and how are you executing the Dell Technologies because you have that entrepreneurial spirit, you are executing, and you have to still grow off this base of a consolidating IT market, go. You know, we've been able to be bold and you know, being private allows us to take on some risks and make some investments and certainly, you know, going private back in 2013 and then the combination with EMC and VMware and Pivotal and the whole Dell Technologies family has created a different kind of company, much stronger than Dell or EMC were by themselves and customers have reacted very positively to that. So when I step back and look at the future of our industry and what's happening with digital transformation and then all the assets and capabilities we have now, again, couldn't be more excited about uh, the opportunities ahead. Um, Bezos said on his interview, I'll ask you the same question in context to your world. He said, you know, Amazon started out driving his car around and going to the, drop us off at the post office and then it became what it is today. And he said he still has the guiding principles that's timeless for his culture, which was, lower prices and get stuff to the consumer fast. That's been the ethos of Amazon's culture and a lot of the other things around, wrap around it, but that's been kind of the guiding principles. What is your guiding principles that have been timeless for you as an entrepreneur-led CEO? It's been customer focus, it's been big years and listening, it's been understanding the customer's challenges and opportunities and designing the company from the customer back. It's been understanding the technology and then finding the intersection between the customer's challenges and the technology to create the solution. And, you know, I think that's, that's stood the test of time for us and worked really well and, wow, I mean, the, the, the opportunities ahead of us yeah. again are even much, much more exciting. Well, congratulations. So I want to ask you the question that everyone's on everyone's mind here at the show, is obviously the EMC, Dell, EMC, culture's still intact. We gave Howard some props on the, on the, on the combination, the merger of equals, um, but now you have Obviously a strategy, I'm not going to deny, it's a pretty good one. <laughs> Mature market, consolidating, win the game there, you see that happening. But the question that I have is the growth strategy, okay? Because you now got to have a growth strategy in a hyper flywheel market called the cloud, cloud computing, cloud native, Kubernetes, machine learning, Pivotal. What is that growth strategy as you build off that existing market? Well, certainly with Pivotal, you know, we've got kind of the tip of the spear of our cloud strategy as the platform to develop cloud-native apps, the operating system for the Internet of Things, and the digital transformation for many of the largest companies in the world. And then with Virtue Stream, we've got a mission-critical public cloud for those 
super high performing, uh, you know, intensive workloads. VMware driving the software defined data center. Everybody wants to have a data center that is software defined. And you know, what, what VMware has done in virtualization obviously is, is unparalleled. Taking that into the network and into storage, uh, VMware's got incredible momentum. I know you're going to have Pat on tomorrow to talk more about that. When we put all this together uh, with the consolidation that's going on in the existing you know, several hundred billion dollar client and data center business, uh, you know, the combination together, we're, we're very well positioned to grow. I got a lot of heat for a few years ago when I said to Pat Gelsinger, um, hybrid cloud is, is, is not uh, is, a, is a destination that most people go to, but I made a comment, I said, you know, the cloud is not a product. Hybrid cloud is not a product. And you can't get a skew on a hybrid cloud. You can't say, give me a hybrid cloud. <laughs> it's more of a mindset, destination of the customers. You said on stage today that private hybrid cloud and cloud is a way of doing IT. Explain specifically what you mean by that and how does that translate into, into growth for you? Well, let me take you back to the internet, okay? Because if, <laughs> if, if, we, if we were having this discussion 20 years ago, we wouldn't be talking about the cloud, we'd be talking about the internet, and we'd be talking about our internet strategy and our internet product division, and our vice president of the internet, and where is all that today? It's everywhere, right? The, the internet is part of everything. I, internet is a, a way of doing IT, and cloud really is the same thing. If you look at these large public cloud companies, what they've done is extrapolated the workload up to the application layer. And that's what we're doing with Pivotal, that's what we're doing with a software-defined data center, that's what we're doing with converged and hyper-converged infrastructure, and that's why all those things are white hot in terms of growth and well, customer adoption. The internet was a bubble that burst that everyone you know, had a with website, you know, remember that those days. But you mentioned the internet, let's just, just stay on that for a second because that's interesting. Software has changed, right? Shrink wrap software, enter the internet, you download it. Okay, now you have the cloud, it's SaaS, so we were just talking in our intro that the role of a software company isn't the business model of selling software, it's how software works within the business model of this new modern era of computing. What's your vision around that? Because a lot of people will say, and I even said to you privately, where's the software play? And a lot of people jump to that, right? Um, so what's your vision around software? You don't have to sell it. I mean, Facebook doesn't sell software. They have software DNA and they're open source, but their business is an application. Can you explain your vision on the software? Sure, well obviously you've got you know, mission critical apps, right? you've got some of the traditional you know, platform two kind of apps, and you've got the cloud native apps. And there's a right place and a right way to develop all those. And it's not a monolith, right? There are many, many different uh, uh, you know, approaches w within that. That's why we see it as a multi-cloud world. For cloud native, Pivotal is clearly you know, our, our platform and a winning platform and has tremendous momentum and avoids this problem of lock-in that you know, many customers are starting to experience with the public cloud. And you can leverage the public cloud but also run them on-premise. In fact, 80% of the pivotal Cloud Foundry instances end up on-premise. Uh, then for the traditional apps, uh, the Platform 2 apps, VMware is continuing to, to do great. You'll see that in, in, in the, 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 the growth of their business and all the success that, that uh, VMware is enjoying as now part of Dell Technologies. And then for those mission critical apps, uh, you know, like SAP, like Oracle, like Epic, you need a, a different level of performance and capability. And that's where VirtuStream comes into play. So I asked you a question last year. What are you most excited about? What are you digging into? You know, what's, get, what's, what's getting you uh, uh, stoked about the stuff in front of you. You mentioned Pivotal. Obviously you've seen that change and have taken a much more strategic front row with Cloud Foundry. This year, what is that um, thing for you? Is it NSX? What are you like looking, what are you geeking out on right now? <laughs> in terms of you look at the, the future, you have to, you're making some bets. What are you looking at? What is Michael Dell unpacking the most for you personally? Not so much for the business, you personally. What are you, what are you learning? What are you understanding deeper? What's exciting is how all of our customers are engaged in this digital transformation. And we're just at the beginning of this. And they're all trying to figure out, hey, how do I use all this data to make my product and service better? And you know, they're all on this digital transformation journey. So again, you put together what we're doing with VMware, the software-defined data center, with NSX, 
with Pivotal, with Converge and Hyperconverge, the amount of growth in, in the data, and then all the new computer science, that's the machine intelligence that's being reasoned over that data, super exciting time. And if you're, if you're not excited now, right, you're to totally asleep or you're dead. Yeah, that's yeah, super, if you're a computer science major right now, best time to be, be coding and building stuff. Okay, Pat Gelsinger. What's the conversation with Pat like these days? Because VMware's market cap is greater than HPE right now. That's one of your companies. It's That's not right. even part of the, not even the holistic view of everything you got. One piece is bigger than HP. You've competed with HP over the years. So you got to go to Pat, you say, you got to watch what you're doing here. You got, you got a tiger by the tail with VMware. What are some of the conversations that you have with Pat Gilson? Share some color um, around how you guys interact. What is he thinking? Obviously he's got some new things with the Amazon relationship. What's the conversation like? Well, I've known, known Pat for almost 30 years. You know, <laughs> you know met, met a long time ago, back when he was at Intel. And VMware's doing great. And the team there continues to innovate in virtualization now with the whole software-defined data center. I am particularly excited about NSX because what you can do when the network is delivered as code by virtualizing the network and virtualizing all the functions in the network, all the layer four through seven functions, and then run that on top of you know, our open switching, it's a huge opportunity. And you combine that you know, with, with everything else we're doing, uh, you know, VMware is incredibly well positioned. And certainly for us, when we think about how do you modernize and automate the, the, the data center, VMware's at the very center of that. So when you have conversations with Pat, are they like, hey, let's take that beachhead, let's conquer that hill. What are some of those conversations when you take them to the ranch or you guys have your meetings? What's the strategy? What's in, you know, take us to the war room. What, is, what are some of the conversations strategically? You know, we, we work together quite closely, uh, as well as ensuring that the open ecosystem that VMware has continues to thrive because VMware also works with the rest of the industry, and that's been an important part of their strategy and an important part of their, their growth for, for a long time. What you're seeing now is a much tighter collaboration across Dell Technologies. So, Boomi and Pivotal working together. Pivotal and VMware NSX working together. Dell EMC and VMware working together and bringing together combined innovations in the form of new products and new solutions like the kinds we're introducing here at Dell EMC World. Okay, so you got 33 years under your belt with Dell, your company, Michael Dell's company. Dell Technologies now, whole new future ahead of you. Um, what's your reaction to EMC World now converted into Dell EMC World? Again, you had a little event in Austin, wasn't really kind of, was Dell, wasn't really the real big EMC World event. This is the Dell EMC World. We spoke last year, yeah. I think we walked back from the, uh, the party chatting. What, what's, what's it like this year? What's different? What's your perspective? What's your reaction? Share some color on what you, what you think's happening here. Well, we've been really thrilled with the reaction from customers and partners. I'll tell you, I think initially there was a bit of a wait and see. Customers were like, oh, how's this going to work? I think we're past that. And now customers are seeing that we really are one company and they're seeing the new products and innovations. And the theory that we had that customers would want to buy more of everything from one company is absolutely playing itself out in the wins and the business that we're seeing. And the, the, the internet is a great example, like I use that analogy, because the internet was overhyped, it popped, but it all delivered the same. There was pet foods online, and everything happened that everyone said was going to happen, it just didn't happen the way they thought. Do you see the cloud the same way? Because in a way, you're taking a very cautious, pragmatic approach by saying, we're going to integrate our customers and have this operating environment called multi-cloud or whatever the customers want. Do you see that internet kind of analogy happening the same now with cloud? Yeah, I think, as I said, cloud is not a place, it's a way of doing IT. And you know, having sold billions of dollars of equipment to the public cloud providers for years and years, what we see, the big difference there is that these companies have again, moved up to the application layer, they've moved to the software-defined data center, everybody wants that. And as we can bring those efficiencies and now with our Cloud Flex pricing, you know, we, 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 see, we see lots of opportunity. As an entrepreneur now, CEO, go back to the entrepreneur, final question for you is, 
there's always the hustle in the entrepreneur. I mean that in a good way. Mark Cuban talks about it like the same way, <laughs> in, in a way like, you still got to have that agile mindset. Never be settled for complacency. Bezos' shareholder letter kind of points out the same thing. Common thread amongst entrepreneurs. What is the Michael Dell zeal right now that you have, that you're pushing through your organization, that really is more of a, not an order, but more of a mindset like to be entrepreneurial? Because it is moving very fast. This transformation, it's business, it's technical, it's supply chain, it's everything across the board, it's software. What do you tell your troops to keep their eye on the prize? What is that entrepreneurial ethos? You know, we, we call it pleased but never satisfied. Right? We are relentless about innovating and improving on behalf of customers and designing our business with the two billion interactions we have a year with customers and taking that input and feedback and making our products, our systems, our services, everything we do better on behalf of our customers to enable them. What's the coolest thing that you saw last year with customers in the transformation of Dell and EMC coming together? What is the coolest customer example you could point to? You know, I saw some customers that used Pivotal to fundamentally change the way they develop applications inside their own businesses. One particular customer showed us that they had 1,500 developers developing 1,000 applications with only four operations people. And the way they did that was they, again, extrapolated up to the platform level using Pivotal Cloud Foundry. That is the, the nirvana state that many of our customers you know, seek to obtain, and we certainly want to help them get there. Dave Vellante wanted me to ask you a question. He says, Michael, with all that money you spent to, to buy EMC 60 billion, all the piece parts, do you have any money left for M&A? And <laughs> if, if you do, I saw a little venture announcement. It looks like the Dell the EMC Ventures is kind of coming together, saw that release. So good to get the hands in the water. You invest personally through your capital company, but M&A is a lot of activity going on. Um, do you have any dry powder left for M&A? We sure do, and, and we've already made some acquisitions, both in the, the Dell EMC level and at the VMware level. And of course, Dell Technologies Capital, we're now having a bit of a coming, art, coming out party explaining what we're doing with the portfolio and the new investments and you know, lots of new investments in machine learning, deep learning, security, and cloud, and all the kind of uh, next generation business models that are important to us. Well, are you going to be involved in some of those decisions? Are you going to see them all, or is that all roll up to you? Or are they going to be I'm, autonomous? I'm, in, I'm involved in them, but look, we got a fantastic team with Scott Darling and, and team you know, running, running the show there, and I'm, I'm uh, there to support them. Well, great keynote. Final, final question. Um, you, you mentioned AI a little bit, some machine learning, you brought that up. Good to see you not really hyping up the AI and not having anything to back it up, not promoting AI. Everyone's coming out and saying AI. So I'd ask you, what's your take on AI these days? Because obviously, augmented intelligence is here today, but AI's been around for a while. Neural networks has been around for years. What's your view on AI, and how do you see that impacting uh, Dell EMC, short, medium, long term? I think the potential here is, is really tremendous. It takes time, though. You know, DARPA had the, the, this, this contest to see, could you drive a car you know, through the desert, you know, vehicle through the desert, 150 miles, back in 2004. The first year, I think the, the farthest I got was eight miles. By 2005, they had lots of cars completing the entire 150 mile journey. Now we still don't have self-driving cars, that was 12 years ago. So it does take time for these things to evolve. But the level of improvement and advancement in the processing power and the learning that's going on in these systems is tremendous. And again, when you have hundreds of billions of nodes and all this data and increase in processing power, it is really a Cambrian explosion. We do think of it as the fourth industrial revolution. And to me, that is incredibly exciting. Michael Dell here inside theCUBE. Michael Dell, Chairman and CEO of Dell Technologies. And this is the Dell EMC world. 2017, the first of the Dell EMC World. Congratulations, great to see you on theCUBE. Thank you, John. More live coverage here at Dell EMC World 2017 after the short break. Stay with us, be right back.